Hello and welcome to another class in uh, Construction Management 324, Construction Planning and Scheduling. And today we're going to start talking about network constraints. So far we have learned about how to break down the project into work uh, groups and break down these work groups into activities through the work breakdown structure. We learned about how to estimate the duration of an activity, which is going to be through the equation Q over P. We learned about how to sequence the activities in a logical relationship and in a logical network through either ADM or PDM. And especially, we're going to focus on PDM. We're not going to discuss ADM anymore. So today, we're going to start talking about a new topic, which is network constraints. What are network constraints and what is their effect on the network calculations? So far, just to give you a uh, quick review, when we try to calculate the total float for an activity, we could do it either from the beginning of the activity or from the end. So from the start side, it used to be late start minus early start, or from the finish, it would be late finish minus early finish. And we usually ended up getting the same number from either side. We also used to find that the network should have at least one critical path connecting all the activities, all the critical activities, from the beginning of the network till the end. And that was the longest path in the network. Today, once we start talking about network constraints, and later on when we see a numerical example on adding these constraints to the network, we're going to find that they're going to break some rules. So, for example, we might end up having an activity that's not critical or non-critical. It might be even half-critical. Or we might end up having two different floats for the activity, one calculated from the beginning and one calculated from the end. Or we might end up having a half-critical path or a, an incomplete critical path. All of these are irregularities in the network that might occur due to the introduction of these constraints. So let's go ahead and see what are these constraints, how are they represented on the network, and what is their effect on the network calculation. We talked about milestones and about flags. So some controls may be imposed on the network schedule, usually in the form of milestones or constraints. So for example, if I have to finish a certain part of the project at a certain date, if for example I have a mandatory completion for the substructure work, that includes the foundations and includes all the earthwork and includes all the underground utilities for the project. If I have a deadline by which I have to finish that package of work because it might be affected by weather or any other reason. In this case, I might say that this milestone has to be completed by a certain date or it has to be completed no later than a certain date. As we have defined milestones previously, Milestones are zero-duration activities. They're not dummy activities. They're just zero-duration activities, denoting the start of an event, which in this case could be a start milestone, or the completion of an event, which would be considered a finish milestone. Flags are in a similar way. It could be a start flag or a finish flag. These are checkpoints inserted in the schedule to make sure the sought progress is achieved, and we comply by certain dates that are specified in the project contract. Since these are zero duration activities, they do not affect the forward or the backward pass calculations. So we're not adding any numbers, we're not subtracting any numbers, therefore the calculations are going to go as usual. Constraints on the other hand are another type of controls that may be either a natural or an artificial constraint imposed on the network. Restricting an activity, such as, for example, the constraint could be, you cannot start earlier than a certain date, and it's called start no earlier than constraint. Or it could be, you cannot finish before a certain date. If, for example, we are going to wait for an external inspection, we, we cannot finish the activity until the inspection is complete, so we cannot finish before a certain date. Or we cannot start later than a certain date. Again, if it's going to be impacted by weather, 
We cannot start later than that and we cannot finish later than a certain date also for the same reason. The more, the most uh, rigid type of constraint is the one that binds me both ways. So starting exactly on a certain date, not before that, not after that, but exactly on, or finishing exactly on a certain date, again, not before, not after, but exactly finishing on a certain date. So these six types of constraints, start no earlier than, start no later than, finish no earlier than, finish no later than, start on and finish on, are types of constraints that can be inserted in the network and they might have some effect on the calculations. Not always, but in many cases they would have an effect on the calculations. Some of them will have an immediate effect on the calculations, as we're going to see in a moment. How are we going to represent these constraints? At least graphically, they are represented by an inverted triangle. Inverted equilateral triangle like this one here, with all three sides equal. And that triangle is going to be split in the middle by a vertical line, which splits it into two identical halves. Now, the shaded half represents where the constraint is going to be applied. Remember that the network flows from left to right. So on the left side as we're moving, if I hit the constraint, that means it's going to affect my forward pass calculations and the forward pass calculations are basically the early dates. So if it's an early date constraint, the shaded part is going to be on the left side of the triangle or the dark side uh, the dark part is going to be on the left side of the triangle. If on the other hand, the shaded or the dark side is on the right side, that means it's going to affect my backward pass calculations. It's not going to have any impact on the forward pass. It's only going to affect my backward pass calculations, including late start and late finish. Now, think about it as a one-way valve, for example, or sluice gate that you, you might have learned about in mechanical or electrical works. So a one-way valve allows for the flow in one direction and blocks it in the opposite direction. So if we have an early date constraint, it's going to affect the flow in the forward pass. It's going to block it or have a check on it in the forward pass, whereas in the backward pass it has no effect on the calculations whatsoever. The opposite can be said for the late date constraint. When we are doing the forward pass, it's going to allow our motion to proceed and our numbers to proceed without any modification, whereas in the backward pass, it's going to have that check and it might affect these numbers. What if now, so looking at this constraint, for example, here it shows that the left side is shaded. If it is put on the start side of the activity, it would mean start no earlier than and if it's put on the finish side of the activity, it would mean finish no earlier than. This one, the late date constraint, again, if on the start side, it would say start no later than. And if put on the finish side, it would mean finish no later than. Question now, what if both sides are shaded? What if the whole triangle is darkened or filled? What would that mean? It means that in the forward pass, if it's on the start side, it says start no earlier than. And in the backward pass, it would mean start no later than. So what does that mean? If it says start no earlier than, for example, day 45, start no earlier than day 45, start no later than day 45, what does that leave? It leaves only day 45, which means you have to start exactly on day 45 and that becomes, as we say, the on constraint or the absolute constraint, the most rigid type of constraints that affects both forward and backward pass calculations. So again here, as we can see, if the whole triangle is shaded, this is the most strict and rigid type of constraints, which is called, if it's on the start side, it's called start on. If it's on the finish side, it would be called finish on. Also called an absolute constraint as it affects both forward pass and backward pass calculations. 
Now let's look at an example here and see what does that mean. Here we have a very simple network, as we have seen before, with different types of relationships. We have finish to start with lag, finish to start without anything, start to start with lag, finish to start with overlap, which is a negative number. Again, here finish to start with overlap, finish to finish, in this case without a lag, and so on and so forth. And yet the new thing that we see for the first time on this network is that we have some constraints. We have two constraints on this network. How are we going to read them? We're going to look at this one first. It says, first of all, the right side is shaded, so it's a late date constraint. It's imposed on the finish side of activity I, so it would read finish no later than day 25. That's how we're going to read it. Finish no later than day 25. So what about this one on activity D? It's on the start side. Both sides are shaded, so it means start no earlier than day 5 and no later than day 5 either, which means start exactly on day 5. Let's just think about it for a second here. Activity D is connected to activity A by a start-to-start -start relationship with four days of lag. So if we did not have the constraint, the number that we should put at the start of activity D would be 0 plus 4, that would be 4. So without the constraint, activity D could have started, the early start could have been on day 4. But the constraint says you cannot start earlier than day 5. In this case, there's a conflict between the constraint and the calculations. In case of a conflict, the constraint overrides the calculations. It has the power to override the calculations. In case there's no conflict, so for example, let's say, uh, as we, we might see in an, another activity or in another example, if here we had only start no earlier than day, let's say day three, start no earlier than day three. For activity D, the calculations say we can start on day four. Day four is not earlier than day three, so it does not have any conflict with the constraint. In this case, the constraint wouldn't have any effect whatsoever. So that's why in some cases it might have an effect, in some other cases it would be totally neutral. Basically, if there's a conflict between the calculations and the constraint, the constraint has more power, it would override the calculations. If there's no conflict between the constraint and the calculations, then in this case as if the constraint does not exist. Which means that whenever we have an absolute constraint like this one, what is that going to do? It's going to create an immediate criticality at that point. If we say start no earlier than 5 and start no later than 5, what does that mean? It means that we have to start exactly on day 5, which means the early start is going to be 5 and the late start is going to be 5. So from this side of the activity, the total float is 0. And that's something new. Activity A might be critical, uh, but activity D, uh, at least on this side of the activity, will definitely be critical. So let's read what we have here on the slide. The network shows, uh, uh, the, the show network gives two examples of constraints. The first constraint imposed on activity D start on. It means that activity D should start no earlier and no later than day five. In other words, it should start exactly on day five. In the forward pass, the calculated early start of activity D should be should have been 4, but now it's going to be 5. And so in the backward pass as well. This results in an early finish on day, on, uh, day 11 of 11 on activity D because 5 plus 6 it would be 11 instead of the natural 10 without the constraint. Similarly, the same constraint is going to affect the late start of activity D, thus overriding any calculated values starting from, uh, resulting from the backward pass. Following the same approach, finish no later than with that constraint. Uh, if we follow the calculations here, let's go through it very quickly. Zero plus three, so we're gonna have here three plus eight, that's 11. 11 minus two, that's nine, plus eight, that's 17. 17 plus two, that's 19. 19 coming from activity F. Let's see what we have from activity, from the other path. Here we have 3 plus 3, that's 6, 
plus 4, that's 10. So it would be 10 plus 2, that's 12. So all of that is showing the, the early dates. If we go back with the backward pass, because again, that is not going to affect the forward pass since the left side is not shaded. It will have an effect only on the backward pass calculations. If you do the math for this network, you're going to find that the originally calculated value starting from uh, resulting from the, for the backward pass in this case would have been 24. Therefore, the in the backward pass, this uh, not this is not going to be affected because it says finish no later than day 25. And the calculated date that we're going to get from the calculations is day 24. Day 24 is already less than day 25. It's already not later than day 25. So it would have no effect in this calculation. Now, this is a very brief introduction about the constraints. Next, in another exa we're going to have an example, a solved example, on the network calculations. We're going to look at all three types and we're going to solve a complete problem on that. I'll see you in another uh, lecture, which is going to be the solved example on the, the network constraints.